morning. So I hope you had a really lovely Sunday. I hope you enjoyed church and the beautiful sunshine. If you hear lots of drilling, banging, all sorts like that, John and Benjamin are busy making me a new um, stand to put at the end of our driveway because there's no craft fairs. Um, they've made me a little shop, so that's quite fun. Benjamin's the, um, like, he organises it all and sets it all out nicely. He likes it. Um, so today we are following on from what we looked at last time um, where Jesus said um, neither do I condemn you and we're looking at no condemnation comes first and it's very important our scripture today is John 3 verse 17 and it says for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world might but that the world through him might be saved sorry I'll say that again for God did, did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus didn't come to condemn. Yesterday's account of the woman caught in adultery demonstrates something very important. What enables someone to have power to overcome sin? The threat of the law obviously didn't stop the woman from committing adultery, but receiving Jesus' acceptance knowing that even though she deserved to be stoned to death, he did not condemn her. That gave her the power to go and sin no more. Notice that Jesus saved the woman righteously. He didn't say, don't stone her, show her mercy. What he said was, let he who was without sin cast the first stone. And on their own accord, the Pharisees and religious mob all left. Also notice that Jesus did not ask the woman, why did you sin? No, what he asked was, has no one condemned you? It seems as if Jesus was more preoccupied with the condemnation of the sin rather than the sin itself. That's such an interesting point and I've never seen that before. Jesus didn't have a go at her for sinning. He was concerned about the condemnation that came because of the sin. It's very interesting. He made sure that she walked away, not feeling the condemnation and shame. Let's not reverse God's order. When God says something comes first, it must come first. God says no condemnation comes first, and then you can go and sin no more. You must really remember that. Christian religion has it in reverse. We say, go and sin no more first, and then we won't condemn you. What we need to understand is that when there is no condemnation, people are empowered to live victorious lives, lives that glorify Jesus. Grace produces an effortless empowerment through the revelation of no condemnation. I'm going to read that again. Grace, that's God's unmerited, undeserved, unearned favour. That's grace. Grace produces an effortless empowerment. So there's no effort on our part. Our part is receiving that grace, that undeserved favour in our life. It's effortless empowerment through the revelation of no condemnation. So that effortless empowerment that comes by grace comes through a revelation of no condemnation. That's very important. It's only as we have that revelation of no condemnation that we receive grace into our lives that empowers us to live effortlessly victorious over those things. Um, carried on there. But uh, what we need to understand is that when there is no condemnation, people are empowered to live victorious lives, lives that glorify Jesus. Grace produces an effortless empowerment through the revelation of no condemnation. It is unmerited and completely, it's completely undeserved. But we can receive it, this gift of no condemnation, because Jesus already paid for it at the cross. You see, God doesn't wipe things away. He doesn't um, brush them under the carpet. Those things have been righteously dealt with on the body of Christ at the cross. 
That is why there's no condemnation. There's no condemnation because that sin that you have committed has already been righteously paid for by Jesus. He paid for it for you. Now there is no condemnation. Truth be told, none of us could have cast the first stone. We have all sinned and fallen short. In Christ, we are all on equal ground. If a brother or sister gets tangled in sin, our place is not to judge them, but to restore them by pointing them to the forgiveness and gift of no condemnation that are found in Jesus. How often we want to restore them by pointing out the law. God says you shall not do that. The Bible says you should not do that. But actually, we restore them by pointing out the gift of forgiveness and no condemnation that then empowers them to overcome those things. It's very, very important. The only person who is without sin and who could have ex exercised judicial punishment on the woman was Jesus, and he did not. Jesus was in the flesh to represent um, what was in God's heart. So Jesus was in the flesh representing what's in God's heart. It wasn't judgment. His heart is unveiled in his grace and his forgiveness. I like to say it this way when describing what happened as the Pharisees won waited to stone the woman. The Pharisees would if they could, but they could not. Jesus could if he would, but he would not. That's our Jesus. And that's our Jesus reflecting and revealing the heart of the Father. That's God's heart towards us today. It's not of judgment. Judgment has been dealt with on the body of Christ. It's done, it's finished, done away with. Now we live in the grace and mercy of Christ and his finished work. Our thought today, God's heart is unveiled in his grace and his forgiveness. And our prayer, Father, thank you that what Jesus did at the cross for me is so much greater and more wonderful than what I can ever imagine. Thank you for the gift of no condemnation and for your undeserved favour because Jesus paid for it all at the cross. I believe that your grace and forgiveness will empower me to live a life that glorifies you today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Beautiful, beautiful today's. Go away today remembering that you are forgiven. There is no condemnation. And that's not because you've deserved it. It's because Jesus has already paid for it. Now you can live free. That will then empower you to overcome your sin. So first, no condemnation. Then go sin no more. Okay, have a lovely day. Bye.